Now at 5 a.m. on WKYT this morning, a crash between a motorcyclist and a pickup truck has left a man dead in Lexington. We'll have more on the investigation from overnight coming up in just a few. We're learning more about the murder case against a Lexington woman. We'll tell you how she knew her victim. And on WKYT this morning, the family of a young Laurel County woman killed after what police say was a domestic dispute is honoring her memory. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning to you and welcome in on your Monday. It's July 6th and we're glad you're with us on WKYT. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Rebecca Smith. Hope you got some sleep last night. I know how I had a little bit of a tough time with all the fireworks going on outside my house. Seems to be some leftovers, huh? I knew yeah. it would happen. So Same deal here. Yeah. In my case, I don't necessarily have a problem with the rain. So, Micah, hopefully it'll happen just at the right time so people won't be shooting off fireworks. <laughs> yeah. You know, it didn't help us that much on July 4th, did it? It was actually Saturday. It was really nice for most of us. A couple of... There were three counties I counted during fireworks on Saturday. Three counties down in the far southern zones that had one blip there on the radar. It looked like Wayne County got the brunt of it, but for the most part, we stayed dry. It actually turned out pretty nice. Current visibility sitting there at very low, anywhere from one to two miles for most, zero for some locations. That's in Madison County. Heads up for that as you're traveling this morning. That's our main issue. Temperatures are in the 60s. Pretty good feel this morning. Not so much this afternoon. It'll start feeling like summer the next several days, and I'll show you that forecast coming up in just a few minutes. Yeah, thank you very much. New this morning, we are tracking the investigation into a wreck in Lexington that has left a motorcyclist dead. And that crash happened just before midnight on Nicholasville Road, right near the Jessamine County line. Let's go out to WKYT's Mark Barber live at the scene now with the latest developments. And Mark, we've learned that road is still closed this morning. When is it expected to open back up? Good morning, Bill. This fatal crash has shut down all the inbound lanes here at Nicholasville Road at South Point Drive. Only one outbound lane is open right now, but investigators tell me they're hoping to reopen more of these lanes sometime in the next hour. Now, police say that this is where a man was killed around midnight when his motorcycle collided with a truck. Investigators tell me that the driver of the truck was heading outbound on Nicholasville Road when they turned left onto South Point Drive, crossing into the path of a motorcycle. The driver of that motorcycle was killed. He has not been identified yet. I asked police if alcohol or speed played a role in this crash. However, they said they don't know those answers yet. They're still trying to figure out what caused this crash. Now, officers tell me that if charges will be filed against the driver of that truck until they are further along in their investigation. Live here at the Nicholasville and uh, Lexington County line, Mark Barber, WKYT. Thanks so much, uh, Mark. We're following a developing story out of Madison County right now. We've learned a fire has destroyed a two-story brick farmhouse on Brassfield Road. Madison County and Waco volunteer firefighters worked to put out the flames. We're told no one was injured in that fire. We do have crews headed to the scene, and we'll have more information and details as soon as they uh, come into our newsroom. We have some new information this morning about a case we've been tracking all weekend in Lexington. 32-year-old Vanessa Napier is charged with murder, and now we're learning more about her relationship with a man who police say she killed. WKYT Sean Moody is live from District Court with this new information. Sean, how do police uh, say Napier knew this man? Good morning, Bill. According to Napier's arrest citation, Lexington police say this man was her boyfriend. Napier was already in jail facing several charges from Kentucky State Police stemming from that bucket truck incident on Friday when Lexington police said she was connected to their murder investigation. She'll be arraigned here in district court at 1 o'clock. Kentucky State Police say Napier stole a bucket truck from a gas station on Friday morning. For an hour, police from five different agencies chased the truck between Richmond and Lexington, finally stopping it near downtown Lexington. State police arrested Napier, charging her with robbery, one endangered DUI, among other charges. We got word early yesterday morning that Lexington police had charged Napier with murder. Lexington police said they went to Napier's home on Athens Walnut Hill Pike for a welfare check on Saturday where they found a man who had been killed. This morning we got a copy of Napier's arrest citation. It says she intentionally caused the death of her boyfriend by means of dangerous instruments. Now the coroner has not released the man's name or how he died. Live in Lexington, Sean Moody, WKYT. 
Sean, thank you very much. We're tracking the investigation into a shooting in Laurel County that has left a young woman dead there. 22 year old Shannon Engel was found dead from a gunshot wound to the head late Saturday night. And police say her boyfriend, 29 year old Christopher Bird, shot and killed her after an argument. Engel's family says she and Bird had been dating for about a year. She had just moved in with him at his home on Hickory Road when the shooting happened. I want my sister to be remembered as a good, loving person that she was. She would have done anything for anybody. And if you didn't have something, she would try everything she could to make sure you had it. Now, Bird, who was accused, did not want to talk with us from jail, but his father tells us the shooting was an accident. An autopsy for Engel is scheduled for later today. Well, police in Georgetown are investigating a string of car break ins. A homeowner who lives on Burkdale Drive says someone broke into his car last week. He says he normally locks his doors, but accidentally left his car unlocked. The thieves took his garage door opener, sunglasses, keys, and a pack of gum, even, but didn't cause any damage to the vehicle. He managed to record the thing on surveillance video. They stole garage door openers and keys to get into our house, so it almost is like they're. I wonder if they're planning on coming back at a better time for them. Uh, are they going to, you know, surveillance the neighborhood and see when the right opportunity is, like if we're on vacation and next thing you know, we come home, our house has been broken into? Moore says the two men looked young and were wearing gray hoodies. A Laurel County man faces charges after a crash on Interstate 75. A deputy say 55 year old Ricky Collins crashed Saturday night near exit 29 in the southbound lanes. When officers arrived, they found Collins jumping over a guardrail and running down into an embankment. When a deputy caught him, Collins, try, Collins tried to fight him off. He's charged with DUI, fleeing, fleeing and evading, resisting arrest, and disorderly conduct. Our time this morning is coming up on 507 on WKYT. Two people are in the hospital after an incident involving illegal fireworks in Louisville. Firefighters say a man has burns on his chest and hands, and a woman has life threatening injuries. We're told that she suffered burns on her hands, face, and chest. She also has inhalation injuries in her lungs. Fire investigators say they are still working to get a better understanding of exactly how that accident happened. Back here in Lexington, firefighters tell us they did not have to respond to any fireworks related issues or injuries on the 4th of July. Police officers, though, tell us they did have to respond to a good number of nuisance calls. Some terrifying moments for partygoers in Harlan County over the weekend. Search and rescue crews tell us that a porch collapsed outside of a house in Cold Iron. Several people were standing out on the porch when it gave way. Most of those people had some minor injuries. A lieutenant with search and rescue says everyone involved was very lucky to walk away from that collapse. It was amazing to me that there wasn't more people injured than seriously injured than what they was. One woman did go to a nearby hospital for treatment. And over North Carolina, they're looking into a collapse yeah. there. 14 people injured. A deck, a deck right? Down. It was yeah. right on a house yeah. on the beach there. So hopefully, oh. you know, people who are critically injured in that, a couple of them, you know, can pull out of that. Yeah, yeah. Keeping watch on that this morning. Tom